Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gaito Crafts. My name is Sarah, and thanks for joining me this week. Um, this time around, I have a slightly different project than I've ever uh, talked about before, and that's a piece of furniture that I refinished myself. Um, it does have to do with craft, and um, so there is a tie in there. Um, it's not something that I've really ever done before successfully, um, so this was a bit of a gamble. But in the end, the project uh, worked out nicely, and so I wanted to share with you my process and also some great resources um, if you have a piece of furniture in particular that you would like to refinish. Um, and of course, here we're talking about a piece of wooden furniture. In my case, it was a cabinet for a sewing machine. Um, so last year, Rick uh, found for me a Singer 99 um, sewing machine in a wooden cabinet. Um, this was one that he picked up at our local transfer station where we um, take our garbage and our recycling. And um, oftentimes people will be getting rid of things that are still uh, serviceable or in good shape, um, but that they just don't need anymore and don't feel like dealing with a thrift store or trying to sell them. Um, they're just giving them away. And that was the case with this um, cabinet and machine. Now, of course, we couldn't test it at the time, um, but when we got it home and plugged it in, the machine worked. And so I took the machine out of the cabinet and took it down to a specialist who um, is a gentleman who used to work for the Singer Sewing Machine Company and knows all about them and where to get parts and how to repair them. Um, so he's been working on that. But meanwhile, um, he does not refinish cabinets. And the cabinet, the sewing table that this machine came in, um, definitely needed refinishing. The It had been finished with some sort of lacquer um, or varnish that was peeling off of the top and I didn't want to have little you know varnish crumbs um, getting all over my fabric um, or snagging on my fabric as I was trying to sew. Um, so I knew I needed to, to do something with the cabinet and at first I tried contacting someone in our local area who refinishes furniture for a living in the hopes that she could do something with it. Um, because I have had experience finishing unfinished furniture, and I know what a sort of a smelly mess this whole process can be. Um, unfortunately, this woman was not able to take on this project for several months, she said after the holidays. And I debated uh, waiting, but ultimately I just got too impatient and I decided I wanted to do this myself, or at least attempt it. Um, so I had a lot of the materials that I needed on hand, and I'll give you a detailed list in a minute. I did have to buy a few extra items as well at the hardware store. Um, and I will say that you wanna do this whole process in an area, preferably even outside if you can, um, if there's a day where the wind's not blowing too strongly so that you're not um, having dust and debris blowing around while you're working with these chemicals. Um, if if not, the second best option, and what I did for a lot of this project, was I worked in our garage um, with the garage door open, um, just to allow for some ventilation and some fresh air because um, things like paint stripper and paint thinner um, and varnish cleaner are very, they have a strong fume um, and they're very bad for you to, to inhale. Um, so you need to be set up properly to do this kind of project. One of the resources that helped me gain confidence um, that I could take on this project was a YouTube channel um, called Dashner Restoration and Design, and I will put a link to that in the show notes. Um, and this is a, a gentleman, he's out of the Midwest, and he um, goes to thrift stores and picks up um, wood furniture, restores it, and resells it. Um, he is not, um, you know, from the way that he presents his information, he's not someone who is like a, a historical um, expert on finishes and everything else. So he's not trying to get the antique necessarily back to um, a historical way that it would have been uh, presented originally. But he takes things, a lot of them from the um, 1950s and 60s, and cleans them up, shows you how to deal with things like gouges, tears in the, the uh, veneer, burn marks, scrapes, um, and just generally 
improve the look of a piece of furniture and then um, do a really nice job refinishing it. And um, what I like about his channel, I think, is a few things. One is that he's not necessarily taking you step by step through every process. He kind of walks you through it in a general way. He does show you some tricks along the way, but nothing's Nothing's a very sort of rote step-by-step -step process. Each piece requires kind of different handling to problem solve um, the different issues with it. And so um, by watching a series of his videos, you're gonna learn different techniques to deal with different issues as you come across them. Um, he seems to use kind of the same uh, finishes uh, consistently. And so you can see what those look like on a, on a, a wide variety of veneers. And he's also doing this to resell his pieces. And so he's not spending, um, you know, the maximum number of hours refinishing something or the maximum number of materials to try to re refinish something. Um, he's trying to do it as economically as possible with the best results possible. Um, and I also just personally kind of like his, um, I guess light monotone that he uses when he's explaining what he's doing. It's sort of soothing to sit and, and just listen to his videos, um, watch a few of them in a row and kind of let the information wash over you. So that's what I enjoy. Um, he also doesn't use any kind of fancy tools or anything like that, just, um, you know, brushes, rags, um, clamps, you know, sandpaper. Um, so the way that he, I guess, what I'm getting at is the way that he approaches refinishing furniture, furniture, it just, it seems very approachable to me um, and something that an amateur like myself can take on. So after, after watching a whole bunch of these videos, I thought, you know, I could do that. Um, so I did. Um, I went to the hardware store, I got my materials, I set aside some time, and I got stuck in. And I did this over, really over two full days. Um, it did take quite a lot of time I'm sure I could have been more efficient about things, um, but again, I'm an amateur, so, you know, I probably spend more time and money doing things that could have been done a little more simply. Um, so we'll get into the process in just a second. Let me give you an overview of the materials that are required for kind of a basic refinishing job. Um, so you will need paint or varnish stri uh, stripper. I used a product that um, was called Citrus Strip, and it didn't smell too bad. Um, it didn't have a, a heavy um, kind of fumey odor to it, so I liked that okay. It's kind of a thicker gel. Um, it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, mineral spirits or some kind of varnish thinner. Um, steel wool. A scraper. I used a flexible putty knife, a, a flexible steel putty knife. Um, you'll need a waste container. I used a cardboard box. You need something to when you're going to scrape off all of the old um, paint stripper and paint or varnish that's coming off the piece, you need some kind of disposable container to put that in. And you do, of course, want to make sure that you're going to dispose of that um, in accordance with you know, good ecological practices and whatever regulations are in your area for disposing of things like paint. You will also need um, fine grain sandpaper you might need wood glue um, and associated things if you have any areas where um, the, the either the wood is separated, like if it's a leg or something that's come loose, you might need to glue that back in place. You also might not have to um, re-glue veneer if veneer is peeling off or separating from the piece. Um, you may need a small syringe to apply the glue into tight spaces or underneath veneer. Um, you'll need either uh, clamps or some kind of strong tape to hold um, the glued items in place while the glue is drying. Uh, you'll need a bunch of scrap rags. Um, you can use old t-shirts. You can also, of course, buy scrap rags, but there's really no reason to do that. I think using just old clothing is fine. Um, you will need some kind of a new finish or oil or, or wax or paint or something. Um, to cover your piece after you've taken all the old finish off. And as I said before, um, this uh, job is very messy. Um, there are a lot of chemicals that you really shouldn't breathe in. And so safety equipment um, like a ventilating mask, goggles, and gloves are highly recommended. Um, I didn't always use all of my safety gear and I really regret 
um, regret that, especially the ventilator, um, because again, breathing in the fumes from these things is not great for you. Um, it can make you feel light, lightheaded too while you're working. Um, so, oh, and one other thing that um, can be helpful in your work area is if you have a way to lift the piece up off the ground. Um, I used, because I was using uh, this on a table, I used um, plastic risers like you can use to raise up a folding table. Um, that just helps you get up off the ground and make sure that you are not working at ground level and not kind of incorporating any dust or dirt off the ground into your into what you're working on. Um, and then it can also save your back um, uh, as you're like stooping and leaning over this piece working on it. Um, so the first step is of course to get the finish or the paint off of whatever you're um, refinishing. And in my case it was some kind of lacquer or varnish. Um, I used the citrus strip and I applied kind of a medium thick layer um, onto the piece and I let it set for about half an hour and that didn't seem to be doing very much so I went ahead and applied some more and then um, covered over the whole piece with a spare plastic bag and let it set overnight um, and then came back the next day. That was partially um, due to the directions on the um, on the can which uh, said that you should um, tent the piece um, if you're going to leave the stripper on for a long period of time so that it doesn't dry out. So you want to keep it wet. Um, but read the instructions on whatever product you're using. Um, that worked pretty well. The second time around I feel like I got most of the, the varnish lifted up off the piece and then I was able to use the scraper to go over the whole piece and scrape off um, that kind of nasty goo that uh, results, which is a mixture then of the paint stripper um, and then the varnish or the paint that's been lifted off the piece. That of course went into my temporary, um, I used just a cardboard box. And um, when you're finished with that step, it can be really disheartening because you have a big nasty mess, this thing's still drippy and gross and it looks awful. Um, so my advice at this stage is to just take heart and persevere and keep going um, because it's going to look a lot worse and, and just be kind of a gross mess before you can uh, move on to further steps and start to feel a sense of accomplishment. So don't give up um, once you've done those first two steps. So once you've removed, um, physically removed the uh, paint stripper and the varnish with a scraper, you're you're going to have this gross residue over your whole piece and you have to go over that with something and kind of get it off as best you can. So the best way to do that I found was to use a combination of dry steel wool which will kind of um, pull up that sticky residue from the paint stripper um, and also steel wool that's been saturated with mineral spirits um, and that will help dissolve the, the gunky stuff um, and help you actually remove the rest of the sticky um, residue left over and really clean it up and make sure that the wood is nice and clean. Um, you may have to go over it a few times uh, with steel wool and mineral spirits. Um, and at first I even used some brush cleaner, um, which is really, I think it's like a varnish thinner. And that stuff really had a strong odor. It almost knocked me out. Um, so do be careful when you're using these different chemicals. Um, but the, the brush cleaner really dissolved some of the stubborn areas where um, the paint stripper hadn't quite gotten everything to kind of break down. So that was pretty effective. Um, and then the other thing, after I had gone over the whole piece with mineral spirits and steel wool, I think twice, there were still just a few areas where I could see that there was some varnish left on the piece. Um, and I'm not sure, it's possible that this piece had already been refinished at some point by someone who wasn't as careful. And so, you know, there may have been drips or just bigger gobs of um, residue left on the piece. So what was interesting about this leftover varnish was that the, uh, the various chemicals I'd applied up to that point seemed to have kind of denatured the varnish in those places and softened it. So it almost had the um, consistency of like a dried on chewing gum at that point, And I was able to easily just scrape it off with my little flexible scraper blade. 
So that's another tip. If you have a, a really crunchy, dried on varnish that's stuck on and stubborn, um, even if you can't get it off with the chemicals, just applying the chemicals, wiping those off, and then trying again to physically scrape them off, scrape them off might be an easier way to clean your piece. Um, and now you can tell a lot about whether you've gotten everything off just by touch. And obviously a lot of these chemicals can be harmful to your skin. So for most of the time, you're gonna be working with some kind of protective gloves on. But um, if you're not sure if a certain area is really completely clean and, and stripped of all of the previous finish, then just running your hand over it, you can feel those places where it's a little bit tacky or where there's a slightly higher um, profile, where there's some layers of varnish built up that aren't, that aren't gone yet. Um, that was really handy. So once I got all of those um, various layers off and have been over the piece very carefully, um, and this is where you can like turn the piece upside down or look at it from different angles, um, you know, shine a bright light on it, look at it um, obliquely so that you can see light going across the surface of the wood and just make sure you've got all of the varnish off. This is your chance to now do some repair. Um, and you might need things like wood putty, you might need something um, like a model paint or a, uh, a touch-up pen or something like that. I didn't really have any places that were discolored, but I did have some, var some veneer that was separating from the piece. So I had one little piece of veneer that was up underneath the top that was coming down from the top of the piece. And then I had another piece of veneer that was a vertical piece along one side, and that was really peeling off or coming off, of, uh, coming separated from the piece um, all along the top edge. So what I did was I took a page from this guy that I mentioned before and filled up a small syringe with wood glue. And I was able to get insert the needle of the syringe between the veneer and the piece uh, the piece itself and squirt glue down inside of that gap and then tape uh, tape the veneer back onto the piece temporarily while the glue dried. So the tape um, with, combined with the glue and the syringe injection method um, was really effective and so I'm glad that I had watched these YouTube videos and learned from this guy's process on how to do that. I'm not sure I would have come up with that solution on my own or you know, that it would have been as effective. Um, obviously your experience is gonna differ depending on, on what kind of a piece you're working on. You, again, you may have to glue legs back in place or you may have to unscrew parts um, to clean around bits and pieces before you put it all back together. Um, the other thing is that with this cabinet, I did not actually take any of the hardware off or take any of the pieces off and that can make it more difficult to get down into nooks and crannies and really do a good job of cleaning. Um, but at the same time, you can risk with an older piece, you can risk stripping screws and things, um, trying to get them out when they haven't been touched in 60 or 70 years. So that was sort of the trade-off and I just decided to leave the hardware alone, work around it and do my best um, to, to clean everything uh, without removing the, the little front door or without removing the um, hinges for the lid of this piece. Um, and something to keep in mind too is that, you know, a rag can be really effective for getting down into little cracks and crevices and getting up a uh, gunk that's stuck in there. So if you have, you know, two pieces of um, a piece that are hinged or coming together, sometimes stuffing a rag down into the crevice and just uh, working it back and forth can be enough to you know, get rid of any um, stuck on paint or leftover paint thinner that's that's gotten wedged down in there, something like that. You do wanna make sure obviously that you get all of the paint stripper and all of these chemicals out of there before you apply your um, new finish. Um, so after um, stripping off the old varnish, cleaning up the piece, and then making any retouches or repairs, um, it's time to sand. And in my case, again, I had a, a veneered um, piece, an older table um, that had kind of been through a lot. And so I knew that it wasn't, you know, it was stained on the top. It wasn't gonna look perfect. Um, 
and I didn't want to overwork the veneer too much or or make matters worse by taking off too much of the veneer with a harsh sanding process. So I just used 220 grit sandpaper, which is quite fine, and went over the whole piece just to kind of lay the grain on the veneer back down after all the chemicals had raised the grain a little bit, um, kind of give it a shiny finish, um, a nice polished finish on the wood before I applied the, um, the final oil that I was going to put on. Um, your mileage may vary, of course. If you have deep gouges or scratches, you might try to sand those out with like an orbital palm sander or um, start off with a rougher grit of sandpaper and then work your way to a finer grit to get rid of, um, you know, uh, other kinds of problems uh, or more uneven surfaces. Again, it's gonna depend on the piece and kind of what you're going for for a final look. Um, for me, it wasn't even so much about what the piece looked like in the end. I just wanted it to have a clean and consistent finish over the whole thing and no peeling varnish at the end. So that's why I sort of did a mim minimalist approach to this restoration. Um, so for the last step, um, what you're going to do is pick your finish. And I decided to use a tinted Danish oil in this case. Um, I had done some, some reading. And um, Danish oil is an interesting product because it's a combination, as the name might suggest, it's a combination of an oil and a varnish in one product. Um, and so you don't necessarily have to apply anything over top of it. Um, it can be used as a, as a finish in and of itself. Um, the other thing I liked about that is that the oil component will actually seep into the wood itself and moisturize the wood. And because this piece was older, um, it, you know, it did have some damage to it and, um, the varnish was kind of thin in places already. Again, I didn't want to overwork the surface of the piece. And so just applying the oil, giving the piece some moisture back and trying to restore the finish. And then, um, with the varnish component of Danish oil, you're, you're kind of sealing the wood as well and protecting it. So I like that it was an all in one product. So I applied the, the Danish oil just with a clean rag, um, going with the grain, and I applied um, several coats of this, probably three coats on the body of the piece and a couple of extra coats on the very top, which will get um, a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of contact and a lot of wear and tear. Um, if you have something like a dining room table um, or a coffee table where you know you're going to get you know, a lot of wear and tear from people um, setting dishes and things down or maybe spilling things. Um, I would really recommend a good polyurethane um, and several coats of that are, we did refinish our dining room table um, and the seats especially, you know, getting up and sitting down in wooden chairs. We have about four or five coats of polyurethane on them and they've lasted um, a long time. They, you know, we've been married 17 years, so the chairs are 16 years old and they still look really good. Um, so a polyurethane might be great for, for anything where you're gonna really use the surface quite heavily. Um, in my case, I'm not even using the top of the, the uh, cabinet very much because the way this one works, the lid flips open to use the sewing machine. And so the top is only gonna maybe occasionally hold um, papers or something like that. Um, so that's why another reason I went with the Danish oil. But I liked the, the Danish oil. It does have um, a bit of a fumey smell to it at first, um, but a few days of airing out um, and that smell dissipated. And the other thing is that the Danish oil does take quite a while to fully dry. Um, so as the name implies, it is an oil and that oil can kind of sit on the surface of your piece and um, still be just ever so slightly greasy or something like that. Um, you get the sensation uh, that, yeah, this is like a, an oiled, a freshly oiled piece of wood. And so um, just allowing that to sit for a couple of weeks before you use the piece will allow the Danish oil to fully um, soak into the wood um, and finish setting up and curing before you use, uh, use the piece. And that's especially important, I think, um, in something like a sewing table where, of course, you don't want the finish to leave any kind of an oil or, or any kind of residue that could then stain your fabric. 
So another, another point to keep in mind depending on the use of the piece that you're refinishing. So um, overall, I would say that I'm very proud with the job that I did. Um, the finished piece looks good and I think it looks probably as good as if I had taken it somewhere and had someone else do it. Um, that said, it was a really, um, it was, it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, it was two full days of work and it was not a very pleasant job. Um, there were definitely stages at which I kind of wanted to give up or step away from the project or, you know, I was not really sure I was doing everything right. And I wasn't sure if I was maybe making more of a mess of things than actually helping anything. So I don't know how gung ho I am about the idea of refinishing other pieces. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you have a good outcome um, from a difficult project that can give you the confidence to say, you know, that was difficult. It was kind of a pain in the butt, but hey, it did turn out okay in the end. And so I know that if I really had to, I could probably take on something else. So, you know, you just got to weigh the pros and cons, I guess. Um, and also, also the amount of money that you're going to spend uh, working on any of these projects and see what solution might be right for you. Now, I never got a quote from the woman that um, turned me away for this refinishing job, but I did spend about $50 in materials to do the refinishing myself. Um, and like I said, I already had a few things paid for um, at home. I had, I had extra steel wool uh, left over. Um, I had a few other items here. I had tape, I had clamps that I didn't have to buy. And so, I'm sure she would have charged me more than $50, or at least I hope she would have, but how much more, I don't know. And so, and then how much is my time worth for two full days of labor, you know? So these are all factors you always have to consider in any kind of DIY project, right? Um, what am I gonna learn? What am I gonna get out of this? Um, how good can I do a, of a job can I do? And what is the final product going to look like? And then how much time and materials do I have to put in in order to get that end result? Um, I'm sure that if I, so I had a lot of materials left over. I still have, you know, most of my jar of paint stripper. I have a bottle of mir mineral spirits that's maybe two thirds full. I have a lot of Danish oil left over. So that's the other thing is that if you, if you did a bunch of these products or projects, then um, the price for the materials goes down per project. But if you're just doing one thing, you still have to buy the same amount of materials to get started. So that's another trade-off too. Um, so, you know, maybe you have someone who does, uh, who does woodworking or who just kind of keeps these sort of, um, DIY supplies in their house and you could you know, just use a little bit of what they have on hand and reimburse them for the cost and then not be um, stuck with a bunch of leftover stuff. Um, I'm sure I'll find a use for this it's somewhere or be able to give it, I have a couple of friends who do carpentry, so I'll be able to get rid of um, these leftover items in some useful way. Um, but again, there's that trade-off of, you know, doing it yourself and spending a little bit more money on materials versus paying somebody to, to do it for you. Um, so those are just some, I guess, thoughts on this project. I'd love to know if you have ever uh, refinished a piece of wooden furniture, what you found, what worked for you. Um, would you do it again? Do you do it regularly? Is it a fun hobby? Um, is it something that you make money off of? Um, you know, I know people that go to thrift stores and buy uh, tables and desks and, and old chairs and uh, coffee tables and things uh, for five ten dollars a piece and then you put in you know a day or two's worth of labor turn around and sell it um, so that's kind of interesting so uh, if you have any comments on this or uh, further questions I can maybe point you to some resources I'd be happy to continue the conversation in the comments below this video Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for next week. We'll have more crafts for you. Thanks again for watching and have a great week.